kind of bury you sometimes if you let yourself go too deep. You can stop me if you've heard this before, but you need to be careful about staring into the abyss because if you stare into the abyss, the abyss also gazes back into you. So you have to be careful about the things that you stare into, the things that you subject your attention to. You have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to. You could listen to the Smiths, you could listen to Unlovable and say, I feel the same way, I'm unlovable, yeah, and be miserable. Or you can listen to it and go, huh, somebody else feels the same way. It's because we don't want to be alone, isolated, alienated. And that's the fear of being unlovable. Unlovable is the fear of being alone. It's not the fear of, of lacking character traits that make us worth loving, it's the fear of being alone. Sometimes sad music can make you happy. And, that, and sometimes that's all you need, like, like you're, you're in a hole, and the hole is right there, and you just can't like reach the edge of it, you know? And all you need is a little bit of a boost, even just that much, man, you know, just that much. And it's enough to grab the edge and pull yourself up out of that, out of that hole. Because you don't need to fit in anymore, because you realize you fit in. Because you fit in in the sense that you, re that, that you realize you don't fit in, and then you start to realize that nobody, very few people, actually really fit in. The difference between you and most of the people is that you might be courageous enough to, to take off the mask and say, look, and people will look at you and be like, that's so weird. Are you weird? Yeah. Yeah, you probably are. You probably are. But that's not a terrible thing. You probably are strange and weird. You're at least strange and weird in the sense that you're willing to to take steps towards your own joy and happiness that, that other people are not. If you're going to be full of joy, you have to be an idealist. You have to believe the best in people. You have to believe the best in yourself. You have to believe the best of the possibilities of, of life. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough. I'm just kidding. It's almost always enough. <laughs>
they feel a way inside that's kind of like, you know, they feel unlovable, but then they have an exterior, a persona that shows like a happiness and a joy. And then we create this persona that, com that combats our shadow. And then we realize that, hopefully we realize sooner than later, that there's no way to possibly ever be happy like that. Because even if you, if someone falls in love or someone loves your persona, then they don't love their real you. They love this thing that you're projecting. And then you feel like you have to keep up that, that facade. And then if you keep up the facade, of course, then you're gonna, you know that, that what they love is not the real you, it's just a fake you. And then you start to feel like you don't really deserve love, which by the way, you should feel that way because you don't deserve love. You know, nobody deserves love, especially the person who thinks that they deserve love. Love is a thing that as soon as you start to feel like you're entitled to it, you no longer can appreciate it. You know, when you, when you get paid from work, do you, go to your, you know, do you go to your boss and say, oh my God, I don't deserve this. Thank you so much. You know, no, you don't. In fact, most people get their paychecks and they're like, I deserve more than this. <laughs> they snatch it out of their boss's hands, you know? Um, and then we even look at like, I feel like I worked more than this. How come I didn't get paid for all the hours that I worked? Because if you deserve something, you don't feel gracious for it. You don't feel gratitude for it. That's a hard thing to try to figure out how it is that you can be loved then. Because if you don't deserve it, then what do you do? Well, you appreciate it when, you're, when it's given to you. It's like a, you take it like a sacrament. You take it kneeling, not because you deserve it, but because it's grace. And then if someone actually does love you, you're like, I don't know if any of you ever experienced this before, but you're like, really? <laughs> Or even just someone just talks to you. You don't have to be in love with you, but just someone likes you and you're like, nah. Or you're like, you'll say something stupid like, they like me, they just want something out of me. Duh, because they like you. <laughs> oh, but I don't know. I, you should, what you're saying there is, I know I'm unlovable. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> because you just know it, you know? But they, but they find something lovable in you. And so now it's worth, there was a student Oh my God, I had a student in one of my classes, and she said something incredibly insightful the other day. She's a 10th grader, though. I'm trying to figure out like how that happened, you know? But she said something smart, and she said something to the effect of when she finds out that someone likes her, and she just says like very matter-of-factly, and she's like, when I find someone likes me, and if, even if I'm not interested in them, I always want to find out why. And she'll, so like, she'll ask them, like, why, why do you like me? And she says that normally they, they, they struggle to answer that question. But that's probably because they're not used to being asked those kinds of things. And she said because she wants to know what it is about her that, that would be lovable. Just like if she finds out that, if, that somebody hates her, she wants to know why. Because she wants to find out what those other parts of her are, are, are dislikable. Because she said she wants to really know all of herself. I thought that was incredibly smart, period. And then she's a 10th grader, period. That's, that's insightful. And so we oftentimes behave in these ways that are guaranteed to make us unhappy, like the sad music, the sad movies, the sad conversations. Um, does the sad music ever lift you up? No, <laughs> no, it just makes you sadder. Then you come across a song. That, that's one of the things about the Smiths, like I said, it's just, it's such happy, jangly music. And the, the lyrics aren't all depressed. It isn't like it's all depressing stuff. But, you know, it can, it can kind of bury you sometimes if you let yourself go too deep. You can stop me if you've heard this before. But you need to be careful about staring into the abyss because if you stare into the abyss, the abyss also gazes back into you. First semester. Yeah, I, was like, I think that was our first quote. If you stare into the abyss, the abyss will also stare into you. So you have to be careful about the things that you stare into, the things that you subject your attention to. You have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to. That's what I'm saying. You need to pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And I don't know, when you're talking to people, like what do you pay attention to with people? Do you pay attention to the good things, to the bad things? There's a concept called crabbing. <laughs> crabbing is when you're, uh, for pilots, if you're, if you're flying. So when, when, when you're flying, we can kind of predict wind shear and where, it's, where the wind's gonna take you. So when you're flying in a plane, you don't just fly through the wind at, like, like it's not there. It pushes you a little bit like this. So if the wind's blowing he heavily in one direction and we can predict you know, wind patterns, you can't just fly. Like if you're, if, let's say you're trying to get to um, 
San Diego, let's say, wherever. And you're flying from wherever would be down here. You can't just fly to San Diego. If the wind is blowing this way and you fly to San Diego, you're gonna end up over here somewhere because the wind's gonna blow you. What you actually have to do is you have to fl uh, aim, yourself, oh, aim yourself somewhere over here because the wind is gonna blow you and then you're gonna end up in San Diego. Make sense? I know, Jose, I know, I know. It's gonna, it's gonna cause you to, to end up over here. The, the wind is gonna, you know, it's gonna push you in that direction. Is that better? Okay, the wind's gonna push you in a certain direction. Now, I'm thinking about this. I think that people are like this. That you can take a person and aim at them exactly as they are and as they present themselves. Um, and that's going to mean seeing them as they presently are. And you can accept people as they presently are. That's possible. But I like to see people as they could be, you know? Like I don't aim at where you are. I aim at where, where I think you could be. I'm aiming over here. Because if you do that, people oftentimes will, will rise to that expectation. And you're gonna find that if you just like see the best in people, then that's what it is that you're going to see. And you're gonna see really great versions of people. You know? If you take people exactly as they are with all their faults and problems, yeah, that's, that's good. But then you're gonna end up somewhere east of San Diego, okay, west of San Diego. But if you take people as you think that, as you see like the best parts of them. So if like, if I see a person who's, I don't know, they've got a little bit of feeling in them. I look at them, I go, and I imagine them as like, oh, but maybe they have like a really deep, you know, you know, emotion to them. Maybe they can really feel things more deeply than other people. And then I look at you and I'm like, yeah, you've got potential. You've got this potential. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. None of us, I mean, and I'm not going to say this in the facetious way, well, none of us really are, of course. Ugh, who cares? You're not there yet, but you could be. And you have the potential that if you aim in a certain place, you can end up where it is that you're supposed to be. Don't aim for where you presently are. Aim for someplace else that's, that can put you where it is that, that you want to end up being. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm, this just occurred to me doing nutrition, so I'm still working this, this idea out. What I'm getting at is that we can listen to the, to the, to the music that, that reaffirms where we are. And it's gonna guarantee that we're gonna go further into the abyss into a direction that we don't necessarily want to be. And we're gonna end up in a place where we don't want to be. If we're listening to things because we want to feel better, then we need to aim a little bit to the side of it so that when the, the trials of life and the slings and arrows of, 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 of life hit us, that when we get to the end of it all, we're gonna be where we wanted to go, you know? So like maybe like, if you're not feeling, if you're, if you're in a bad mood, then you come in, you act like you're in a bad mood. What's going to happen? You're gonna piss off people around you. You're gonna be angry at them. And then you're going to end up somewhere drifting over here because you're letting like those, those winds of your, of your attitude push you where you don't wanna be. But instead it's like, I'm gonna aim at, I wanna be happy. So I'm gonna aim at being happy and acting like I'm happy. And it doesn't mean like you know, being completely fake. It just means that it's probably not anybody's fault who you interact with today, that you're in a bad mood. Like if I come in here and I'm in a bad mood, one thing I'm sure about is that it's none of y'all's fault. And so it doesn't make sense for me to, to just kind of aim at that. I wanna aim at being happy and then act like it. And then no weird thing happens. You influence the opinions and the attitudes of people around you. And then you maybe, you'll maybe, you maybe you'll inherit some kindness from people that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten just because you're being nice to people. You know, yesterday I was in a bad mood. It was a terrible mood yesterday. Why? I don't know. I couldn't possibly tell you. And so, he doesn't listen, I can say this. So I, I sent a friend of mine a message and said, hey bro, I just wanna thank you for everything, for being an ear that listens, someone who motivates me, someone who pushes me, someone who helps me be a better person, and pretty much being an all around great dude. I don't say it much, but I admire and appreciate you. Why? Why did I send that to him? Because I was in a bad mood. <laughs> And he messages back, and he's a man of few words. I feel the same way about you. You're a good man, and I, and I aspire to be one day. And I read that, and I said, so, so you aspire to be one day. <laughs> I think he meant to be one one day. 
I could tear it apart, man. But then you get that back and you're like, oh, okay. Why do you write that back? Because he didn't know what to say. How do you receive that message and not say, you can't just message back, K. <laughs> or, <on> cool, what's <laughs> that? Or leave on red. Yeah, leave on red or, or the <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> you know? He didn't know what to say. <laughs> what's that? Or heart the yeah, or heart the message. That'd be like, bro. <laughs> Don't heart the message, bro. <laughs> so what you do is you aim at where you want to be. And you aim a little bit to the side, knowing that you're going to end up a little bit over there. You know? Just because that's where you want to be. Um, but that's, that, but that's, that's a choice to aim with where you are or to aim at where you want to be. Sad music can... <coughs> I mean, mu music is like fiber. You know, it's like it's like fiber for all the for all the crap that you have bottled up inside of you. And you know, the more of it, the more fiber you take, the more more crap comes out of you. The more the more music you listen to, if there is some of that like stuff inside of you, it can you can take it out because you could listen to the Smiths, you could listen to Unlovable and say, I feel the same way. I'm unlovable. Yeah, and be miserable. Or you can listen to it and go, huh. Somebody else feels the same way. Like, why do you like, think about the essence of why we why we would be why we would fear being unlovable? It's because we don't want to be alone, isolated, alienated, and that's the fear of being unlovable. Unlovable is the fear of being alone. It's not the fear of, of lacking character traits that make us worth loving. It's the fear of being alone. And so you listen to that song and you realize, well, Morrissey, as a singer, Morrissey feels the same way. Now there's two of us who feel the same way. Not so alone. And then you realize it was a popular song. It wasn't a hit, it, but lots and lots of people like that song. And you realize, huh, there's millions of people around the world who like that song, and so otherwise it wouldn't be on the record. And so therefore you realize, huh, there's lots of us who feel the same way. So the way I feel isn't, isn't so wrong. But people manage to, to bring their way out of it. And, and understanding it that way, it can help to lift you out of the bad mood that you're in. Sometimes, Sad music can make you happy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes that's all you need. Like, like you're, you're in a hole, and the hole is right there, and you just can't like, reach the edge of it. You know? And all you need is a little bit of a boost, even just that much, man. You know, just that much. And it's enough to grab the edge and pull yourself up out of that, out of that hole. That's all you needed was a little bit. You guys know the song Happy by Pharrell? I love that song. Yeah, what's that? I hate that song. Why? Why? You know what I'm saying? What, in what sense? No, it's important. In what sense? Like, you hear it everywhere. Like, it's like a thing with all that song. Yeah, and why would people be listening to that song? How does it make a lot of people feel? Happy. And the thing, the whole song is about him feeling happy. You know, he wrote that song when he was absolutely miserable. Yeah, he's incredibly sad when he writes that song. That's why he wrote, he, he wrote it ironically. Any of you guys like have ever heard the band Smashing Pumpkins? They have a song called Today. It's like a, if, if you heard it, you probably recognize it. And the opening line of the song is, Today is the greatest day I've ever known. Can't live for tomorrow. He wrote that song when he was when he was contemplating suicide. He was incredibly sad when he wrote that song. That's why he wrote it ironically. But if you listen to it, you're like, yeah. And you're like, you're driving this thing, you go, yeah, today's, today's a great day. That's not what he meant. But why do you project that? Because he didn't want other people to, to, to go through what he was going through. Why did Pharrell write that? Because he, he didn't want other people to go through what, what he was going through. Sometimes you can, I mean, there's, there's, there's great joy that can come from that. And so what I'm saying is that sometimes maybe if you're searching for a level of meaning in your life, don't aim where your life presently is. You know, aim for where you want your life to be. And if you want your life to have some level of meaning and purpose and joy and happiness and all of these beautiful things that we write songs about, then you aim just a little bit to the right of that. And you understand that the winds of life are going to push you in certain directions. Understand that as strong as you are, you might not be strong enough to, set, to go through all of those winds without being diverted just a little bit. The world has a way of, of, of pushing us around. Um, what you don't want to do is have the world push you so far off course that you don't recognize your own life. Such that you don't recognize your own body because you don't recognize what it is. You don't recognize your own mentality because you don't recognize it for what it is, which is wholly and entirely you. Because you don't need to fit in anymore because you realize you fit in. 
because you fit in in the sense that you that, that you realize you don't fit in, and then you start to realize that nobody, not nobody, very few people actually really fit in. The difference between you and most of the people is that you might be courageous enough to, to take off the mask and say, look, and people will look at you and be like, that's so weird. Are you weird? Yeah. Yeah, you probably are. You probably are. But that's not a terrible thing. You probably are strange and weird. You're at least strange and weird in the sense that you're willing to, to take steps towards your own joy and happiness that, that other people are not. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. See them for what they are, man. You know, see the best versions of them. And if you see the best versions of, of, of people, they won't always live up to it. They usually won't. But if you see the best version of them, at least even if they aim a little bit over here, and even if they don't make it to San Diego, they're closer than they would have been. People are closer to their ideal form. So you have to be, if you're going to be full of joy, you have to be an idealist. You have to believe the best in people. You have to believe the best in yourself. You have to believe the best of the possibilities of, of life. I mean, what's the alternative? The world sucks, and then it turns out you're right. Oh, <laughs> good. So you were right about something, that you're right about being miserable. But it doesn't have to be. Certainly, at least your world doesn't have to be. Aim a little bit to the side and see where you end up. What was it one of my students last year said? Aim for the stars, but negotiate from the moon. You know, at least you're, you're closer than you would have been. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough. I'm just kidding. It's almost always enough. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Uplifting, positive in some way.